All right, going to do a video going through some clear scriptures that demonstrate the ability of contrary choice and refute the Calvinistic heresy of denying this responsibility and ability of choosing between good and evil. Because what Calvinism is, is that it's a, a theology based on eisegesis. They will insert theology into a select few proof texts they have, and then they will interpret all the other verses around these select few proof texts, but they won't actually look at the whole of scripture and compare verses uh, scripture with scripture. Okay? What they teach is they do teach that man has a sinful nature, which is true, but they take it so far to where, because total depravity is a perversion of the scriptural teaching of a sinful nature. They say that man is sinful nature, so therefore they're so depraved they can't choose between good and evil, and they can't choose God. That's unscriptural. These scriptures I'm going to read clearly show the ability to choose between good and evil, and how they not only do you choose, but you're accountable for your choices. See, if there's no free will, then it destroys accountability. And essentially, you just blame God for your actions. And Calvinists can try to deny that, but if we're consistent with their theology, then you could just blame God for your, your sin. Because if ever if you have no free will, you know, that, that's, that's, that's what happens if you're consistent. I'll put it that way. But first of all, like I said, the scriptures teach responsibility and ability to choose between good and evil. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 5 down to verse number, or sorry, verse 15 down to verse number 20. I do apologize. It says, See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou, go, whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall utterly perish, and that ye shall not, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call, uh, sorry, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, a bless, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that sorry, that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey His voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto Him. For he is thy life and the length of thy days, and that, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Okay, notice that. They're told to basically choose, and they're, they're, what happens is a result of their own choice. They're held accountable for the choices they make. Okay, the power of contrary choice, free will. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 26 down to verse 28. See, again, I, I've said this before, but Calvinism... If Calvinism was true, then there's no personal accountability. Then there's no way you can be held accountable for your own choices. But this is Deuteronomy chapter 11. But these scriptures I'm going to say, I'll put it this way. These scriptures I'm going to read teach otherwise. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26 down to verse 28. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse, a blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you to, which I command you this day, and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. Notice that if you know it's a condition there, okay? And they're, they're they make the choice, and what choice they make, they're held accountable for it. We see again the power, the free will to make the choice. Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 down to, <coughs> sorry, verse 14 down to verse number 15. And he knows that you see, if ye, if ye, see, it's their choice. And, they, and, when they, and when they make a choice, the results of that choice are on them. They can't blame God, they can't even blame the devil, it's their own choice. Joshua chapter 24, verse 14 down to verse number 15. Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Okay, and you don't go down to verse number 22, they're again told, you know, that they've chosen the Lord. See, they cho they make the choice themselves. They, and if they didn't choose the Lord, the inevitable consequences, they have no one to blame but themselves for the inevitable consequences for refusing to obey God. First Kings chapter 18, uh, verse number 21. Another good verse on the matter, First Kings chapter 18, verse number 21. Another example of the power of contrary choice and personal accountability too. First Kings 18, down to verse number 21, says, And Elijah came unto all the people and said, 
how long how long halt ye between two opinions if the lord be god follow him but if baal then follow him and the people answered him not a word see they again they have to make the choice it's free will they have the ability of contrary choice jeremiah chapter 38 verse 20 down to verse number uh, 21 and there's many other scriptures too these are just a few of them there's there's countless scriptures that teach the power of contrary choice which tie into personal accountability jeremiah 38 verse 20 down to verse number 21 but jeremiah said they shall not deliver deliver thee obey i beseech thee the voice of the lord which i speak unto thee so it uh, so it shall be well unto thee and thy soul shall live but if thou refuse to go forth this is the word uh, what, uh, that the lord has showed me and he goes on to explain the consequences for not making the choice to obey god okay we see this the power of contrary choice if ye, you know, if ye, you, you see this all throughout the Old Testament. If ye, they're told to give, they're told if ye will obey, then this will happen. If you disobey, this will happen. It's the key accountability. And if they choose to not obey God, whatever consequences fall upon them, they have no one to blame but themselves. But if Calvinism were true, they could just, well, say, well, God, you, sh you didn't will us to do that. So, you know, see, Calvinism makes God into a worker of iniquity. And Calvinism makes God into basically... You know, this essentially what Calvinism does, it makes you a robot and it makes God some kind of like, I guess, evil scientist or whatever. And whatever you do, you just blame God. See, some Christians will blame the devil for their actions, but if you're a Calvinist, you can just blame God for your actions. Plain and simple. And also, here's some other scriptures too that prove the ability of contrary choice and free will. There is Proverbs chapter 1, verse 29 down to verse 31, a very good scripture on that. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 14 down to verse 21. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 13 down to verse uh, 19, I believe it is. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 26 to 30. Ne uh, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 16 to 20. Isaiah 55, verse 6 to 7. Psalms 81, verse 10 to 14. Psalms, or sorry, Isaiah 48, verse 17 to 19. Jeremiah 11, verse 6 to 8. Jeremiah 18, verse 10 to 11. And, and there's just tons of others too. These are just a couple others listed off these these scriptures and many others prove free will and the ability of contrary choice and personal accountability for your own choices you have no if you've sinned and you're punished for it you got no one to blame but yourself now there are definitely cases where the devil can tempt you but ultimately you make the choice to sin by your own free will but again if calvinism were true if it were to be consistent with calvinistic theology you can just blame god for your actions hence why calvinism makes god into a sinner and worker of iniquity so anyway, and by the way, that's not my wording. I have a blog post on my website, and I've shown in other videos too that Calvinist theologians themselves openly say that God causes an author's sin. So it's not my wording. They, they themselves say that God is basically, is basically the one who causes sin. Side issue. But anyway, don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.